The research that we're doing is looking at the associations between um, having a hospital diagnosis of a mole and subsequently developing uh, malignant melanoma, one of the most dangerous skin cancers. Um, so we um, have data and access to uh, the national hospital episode statistics for the whole of England. So we have data for all the NH hospitals in England um, between uh, from, 19, from the year 1999. We constructed two groups. One of them was um, a mole group. So these people had visited hospital and been coded and diagnosed as having a mole in hospital or in day case, uh, in, in, in day case health visit. And the other group was um, a group which didn't have a diagnosis of mole. And comparing those two groups, our overall finding was that people with moles were actually at significantly increased risk of developing melanoma within our study period. And the overall risk, um, discounting the first year, which uh, potentially um, has conf confounding factors of misdiagnosis within the first year. So discounting that uh, first year, uh, the increased risk were um, the people with in the mole group were at 4.7 times increased risk compared to the, uh, the non-mole group of developing um, malignant melanoma. The um, two other uh, significant findings that uh, broadly we had was that these increased risks persisted um, long after the initial diagnosis, so the increased risks were still significant five plus years down the line from the initial diagnosis of the mole and also occurred at different sites to the original mole. So for instance, if you had an increased risk of having a mole, uh, if, if you're diagnosed with having a mole in the face, you also um, had increased risks of developing melanoma elsewhere in the body like the uh, legs, the torso and other areas as well. So while we had large, um, while we had large amounts of numbers, so our study was very highly powered, um, we didn't have a lot of individual level detail on exactly how many moles or how t atypical they were. Uh, one can assume if these patients are, are um, pitching up to hospital and self-presenting and requiring hospital diagnosis of, uh, of a mole, then these are likely to represent um, a more atypical end of the spectrum, so moles that are perhaps funny looking or more numerous. And that's why the risks that we find are greater perhaps than in other studies. We, um, uh, so we constructed these two cohorts. In the mole cohort, um, we looked at um, 200, over 270,000 people with hospital diagnosis of moles. And we compared that with our control hospital cohort, which had over 10 million patients. Several things, I think. Um, firstly, it kind of fully demonstrates the increased risk, uh, particularly in uh, this particular hospital cohort of developing the malignant melanoma, which is something they should be extra vigilant and obviously the usual sun protection and sun awareness advice um, would apply especially to these uh, groups of patients. Um, secondly, um, the finding of, of, of being diagnosed with a mole that is benign um, was perhaps previously thought um, to be an all clear for these patients, but um, what our studies suggest are that even if you have been diagnosed with a benign mole, that you are at increased risk still of having malignant melanoma in the future, uh, both at that site and at, at, at other sites as well. What we find in our study is not um, the, 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 the knowledge that having um, a large number of moles or a large number of atypical moles um, it's, it's well known that they, they're both um, independent risk factors for developing melanoma. So that's not an entirely novel finding, but um, uh, we, 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 our, our study looked at a very large number of these hospital cohort. So um, f the finding of particularly increased risk in this group is perhaps um, something that um, we should look at um, being extra vigilant.